Hey everyone, uh, I want to talk about a very serious topic today on this session of Say It Stronger. And it's a, it's a topic that isn't necessarily about how to improve our communication, but to be aware of a problem in communication that sometimes we get caught in. And it's this whole topic of gaslighting. And so I want to talk about what that is and what that means and what we can do about it. So gaslighting at its core is the attempt of one person to override another person's reality. When someone or even sometimes something tries to convince you that what you know to be true is not true. It's fundamentally psychological abuse. It's toxic communication. It's, it's highly manipulative. A, a gaslighter will cause you to question your, your sanity, your feelings, your, your reality at its core. And it causes the victim of gaslighting confusion and uh, this inability to trust themselves. And so where do, where do we get this term gaslighting? It's kind of a weird term, uh, but it actually comes from a a play from the 1940s and then a, a, a movie where the husband, you know, the main character in the story, secretly makes changes to the environment in the house and, and does all these little things and, and, and is, is creating, you know, moving things and even uh, causing uh, uh, his wife, Bella, to like notice these changes that are happening, but then uh, the husband tells Bella that all of this is in her imagination. None of this is really happening, but it was a way for him to control her, to uh, manipulate her, and actually carry out some pretty dubious things that the husband was doing. So that's where we get the term gaslighting. It comes from the movie back in the 1940s. Gaslighting, if we were going to make this a, a math problem, it looks like this. Uh, we know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. But a gaslighter says, oh no, two plus two doesn't equal four, it equals five. You didn't know that? How could you not know that? Of course it's five. And you're sitting there going, no, I, I, I know two plus two is four. But through the gaslighting and through this manipulation, they convince you, ultimately convince you that two plus two is five, even though you know that's not true. So what are some characteristics of a gaslighter? Well, number one, manipulation. They're incredibly manipulative. Um, num number two, uh, a gaslighter will always have you end up apologizing for everything. Uh, they, will, they will place themselves and, and the gaslighter will assume that they're the victim and that you're the one uh, who's the perpetrator. So you end up apologizing. Again, it's just backwards. It's upside down in terms of how, how the, the real world and the real conversation is going. Uh, and then a gaslighter, another characteristic of a gaslighter is it, it undermines always or undermining your word and your reality. They're always telling you that what you believe is not right. And, you know, two plus two is five and, and things that you know are true about yourself or what you've experienced that all of that's crazy. Like you don't know what you're talking about. And so what, what are some characteristics that makes us susceptible to being gaslit by somebody? Well, people pleasing, uh, our constant need for approval and really dependency on other people, kind of an over unhealthy dependency uh, on them. And also we have like the, this, this need to see our partner or spouse or a friend in this positive light. It's like we, we're compelled to like give them the benefit of the doubt when really they're the one gaslighting us. So gaslighting comes in kind of three different stages and it, it kind of builds, each stage builds on each one leading to ultimately your whole world feeling like it's upside down. So the first stage, stage one, is where you argue over things that, that you know are not open to debate, like your opinion or your feelings, like they're your feelings, so why are we debating the way that I feel? They're mine, I know what, they, what I'm feeling, there's a truth about that, but the gaslighter says, no, we're gonna argue, you don't feel that way, you, you don't think that. That's what stage one looks like. Stage two, 
uh, you begin to doubt basic things about yourself. And so now these arguments aren't arguing about opinions and feelings, but you argue to prove your goodness, your, your worth, your value, that you're, uh, uh, you know, kind of the, we're sort of now arguing just about the basics of you as a human being. And then finally, the third stage of gaslighting is you are consumed with understanding their point of view, the gaslighter's point of view. You obsess over every criticism they have of you. You're like grasping and reaching and trying to, to make sense of this all to where like you've completely abandoned yourself and you're at complete control of the gaslighter. So what's the solution? Well, number one, move from conflict to disengagement. As, as long as you stand there and you argue and you participate in this gaslighting framework, things aren't gonna get better. You actually have to disconnect it, disconnect from it. Uh, when you engage your gaslighter, you basically are validating that who you are is up for debate. And we need to stop this. Maybe we just have to have the philosophy of let's agree to disagree. And that sometimes communication is not the solution. So bottom line, gaslighting is abusive communication. It's fundamentally communication that somebody uses to control somebody else. Listen, you're not crazy. You do not have to constantly defend your right to your feelings or your emotions or even your very existence. You know, guys, sometimes saying it stronger means to say, I'm done arguing with you. And this ends today. Hey friends, if you found this to be helpful, I encourage you to share this on social media and maybe even send the link to a friend. We'll see you next time.